is Russia breaking Ukrainian lines in Bakhmut? But is Ukraine pushing in Kherson Oblast of all places? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's April 23rd, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, let's talk about the control map, and we'll take a look at the most uh, interesting, noteworthy occurrence is in Bakhmut. And as you guys can see, remember yesterday, we were looking at Russian forces all along this railway here. They had pushed past it entirely. But now, in the last 24 hours, we've seen huge progress Um by Russian forces. You can see basically the entire northern uh, part of the city that was under Ukrainian control has been withdrawn. Um, you can see significant progress um, in this northern uh, front here. You can see they've pushed hard into the remaining urban center. Just considerable, considerable progress. Uh, this is this is more city blocks taken than we've seen in probably the last week. So very, very uh, troubling sign uh, from Bachmann. <clears throat> when we look at the combat map, you can see why. Uh, you can see, of course, that Russia has launched uh, virtually no attacks in Avdivka, uh, no attacks in Volodar, no attacks north of Crimean alignment, Everything, all 58 of the attacks are in the Bachmann area, south, north, Right. So a really high volume of operations, probably Russia focusing and surging in its efforts to take the city. Now, here's where things get more interesting. Russian mill bloggers have provided geolocated footage and textual reports that confirm Ukrainian forces, according to Institute for the Study of War, have established possession p p positions, my gosh, in the left bank of Kherson as of April 22nd, though unknown at scale or why. And this shows, of course, that uh, Ukrainian forces have established positions on the Dnieper River's bank north of Oleshki. This is uh, south, uh, southwest of Kherson city. We search for Oleski, Oleshki in Kherson region. You can see, crucially, it is uh, south of the Dnieper, or in this case, on the left bank, I guess, depending on where you're looking. Um, and as you can see, this is a town of, of some note. So seeing Ukrainian forces operate here, one, is wild to me for a couple of reasons. First and foremost is that it's across a river. Rivers are natural choke points. They are really hard. They are natural obstacles that are very difficult to navigate because they are by sort of by definition restricted by choke points here along the Dnieper. So um, the fact that Ukrainian forces are continually operating in this area, again, I think they probably mean in this area here is indicative of, well, something, because it's really a precarious position to put your troops in for no reason. Um, the footage indicates that Russian forces may not control islands in the Kinka and Chivka rivers, uh, right near the Antonovsky Bridge. And these mill bloggers are claiming Ukrainian forces have been in these positions for weeks, have established stable supply lines to the positions, and regularly conduct missions in the area, all indicating that Russian control is not very solidified. This is really interesting that Ukrainian forces are here and are establishing supply lines. Now, remember, uh, maintaining a platoon or company-sized element is one thing. Uh, and having, you know, that can be supplied with a pontoon or ferry system. Um, it's much harder to supply, again, a 40,000 plus offensive across these rivers. Um, some maps claim that Russian forces don't control some of the Dnieper River deltas near outside of Kherson, right? That's this region here, uh, which, of course, this also assesses that this is not Russian controlled, but it's not clear who does control it, except for this little part here. Huh. But as you can see, the notion that Kherson south of the Dnieper River is controlled by uh 
Russia. It may not be fully correct. The mill bloggers are saying that slow Russian artillery fire and over-centralization of command uh, is what allowed Ukrainian forces to quickly land on the East Bank. Um, and Russian forces may be prioritizing their defenses in urban areas, leaving the islands unmanned. Uh, again, the extent of the positions is unclear. Uh, so it it what it's hard to discern what this means. What I will point out is that as discussed, right, you've got the Antonovsky Bridge. This is sort of a far side bridgehead to the Antonovsky, um, but it is just hard to understate the difference between a company or even a light infantry battalion sized element operating in these spaces. They being resupplied can be done with a brief convoy once a day, uh, or even as little as once every other day. Uh, in contrast, when you look at a uh, brigade or multiple brigades that you would need, if this was the bridgehead to a larger invasion, um, you would need a lot more. And these choke points would become a huge issue. Just getting 45,000 troops across these choke points would be a tremendous amount of work for Ukrainian forces and would mitigate a lot of the potential benefits of operating a mechanized uh, force, right? The tanks, etc. cetera. Uh, it's also not clear that there could be a supporting effort given that if your goal is to launch a ground assault, it would have to occur from this distance away, right? Hundreds of kilometers, probably around 200 kilometers or more. Uh, so I'm a little bit of a skeptic of this idea that this is anything other than a diversionary effort or an effort by Ukrainian forces to force Russians uh, to make hard choices between Bakhmut, uh, defending places like Melitopol, Mariupol, Avdivka, um, and they, this is probably just to keep them on their toes. But sometimes, again, in warfare, deception is sort of its own advantage. Um, and behaving in ways that the enemy doesn't expect means that the enemy isn't prepared for it. And their lack of preparation may at times be able to overcome the natural obstacles to a plan. Anyway, guys. As always, thank you for joining me on this quick one. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out combatvetnews.com. This is my website where you can get access to, um, for free, exclusive stories, the kind that I can't get to. Um, we just talked about the Sudan um, failure of the Sudanese ceasefire. Uh, we also, of course, have uh, all my YouTube videos. And if you want to become a member, you can support what I do. Certainly, YouTube, definitely not out here looking out for me. Um, and you get you access to the members only content. We just checked out the viral video of the Da Vinci Wolves. This is a GoPro footage that probably by in the US, we'd consider this uh, individual here for like a silver star for valor, leading his fire team um, or squad in repelling a Russian assault in close quarters. It is some of the craziest war footage I have ever seen full stop. So if you want access to that, definitely become a member. You can join the likes of our lieutenant tier members who I sincerely appreciate or the absolute chads of our colonel tier members who support the channel. Thank you guys as always. See you in the next one.